This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. It certainly helped introduce it into American culture. Surprisingly, it did not enter into common usage until quite recently. The earliest published example of the phrase serial killer that the editors of the Oxford English Dictionary have been able to come up with is only 20 years old. It comes from the article Leading the Hunt in Atlanta's Murders by M. A. Farber, published in the May 3, 1981 issue of the New York Times Magazine. Here, reprinted for the first time, is the passage containing the first known published use of the term serial killer. Someone raising a question that trails Brown from forum to forum asks about race and the murders. Some Atlantans fear racial violence if a serial killer is discovered to be white. Definitions. Since the term serial killer was invented to describe a specific type of criminal, you'd think the definition would be clear-cut. However, confusion surrounds the term. Even the experts can't agree. Let's start with the official FBI definition. Three or more separate events in three or more separate locations with an emotional cooling-off period between homicides. FBI Crime Classification Manual, 1992. This definition stresses three elements: one, quantity; there have to be at least three murders; two, place; the murders have to occur at different locations; three, time; there has to be a cooling-off period, an interval between the murders that can last anywhere from several hours to several years. The last two characteristics are meant to differentiate serial killing from mass murder, in which a suicidal, rage-filled individual slaughters a bunch of people at once—a disgruntled employee, for example, who shows up at his office with an automatic weapon and blows away a half dozen co-workers before turning the gun on himself. There are several problems with the FBI definition. In one respect, it's much too broad, since it can be applied to homicidal types who aren't serial killers—professional hitmen, for example, or Western outlaws like William Billy the Kid Bonney, who is said to have gunned down 21 men before he reached the age of 21. Mad bombers like Ted Kaczynski also meet the FBI's criteria, but none of these types match the common conception of a serial killer. In another respect, the FBI definition is overly narrow. Since it specifies that a serial killer has to commit his crimes in three or more separate locations, to be sure, some serial killers range far and wide in their search for prey. Ted Bundy, for example, murdered women in several different states. Others, however, prefer to do their dirty work in one place. John Wayne Gacy, for example, turned the basement of his suburban split level into a private torture chamber and even disposed of his victims' remains at home, stashing them in the crawl space until he ran out of room. The main defect in the FBI definition, however, is what's missing from it, namely, any sense of the specific nature of the crimes. When Siegfried Krakauer first used the term serial murderer. He was discussing the character played by Peter Lorre in Fritz Lang's classic movie *M*, a repulsive, moon-faced pervert who preys on little girls. A few years later, John Brophy used it to describe killers like Jack the Ripper and Earl Leonard Nelson, the infamous guerrilla murderer of the 1920s who strangled and raped several dozen women across the United States and up into Canada. And when Robert Ressler and his colleagues in the behavioral science unit adopted the term in the 1970s, they applied it to homicidal psychopaths like Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, and Edmund Kemper. In all these cases, there was one common thread: a strong component of depraved sexuality. Recognizing this fact, some experts stress the sexual motivations behind serial murder. Defining it as the act of ultra-violent deviants who get twisted pleasure from inflicting extreme harm on their victims and who will keep on committing their atrocities until they are stopped. Of course, there are criminals who match this profile, but who can't be considered serial killers for one simple reason: they are caught after committing a single homicide. An example is James Lawson, described in the book *The Evil That Men Do* by Stephen Michaud. And former FBI special agent Roy Hazelwood, 
another member of the FBI's original Mindhunter team. A convicted rapist, Lawson was sent to a California state mental institution where he struck up a friendship.